another home safari with the Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, my name is Cody. I'm one of the head keepers here at the Wings of Wonder Birdhouse. So I'm inside the polar exhibit. So we're inside the three species of penguins. A really, really cool exhibit. This is kind of the interesting time to be in the exhibit too. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, a lot of really cool stuff, especially this guy right here. This is probably my favorite bird. He's what I like to call an adora bro. He is, his name's Burger. He is a king penguin. Really, really awesome food. They've got really, really awesome uh, filtered water, so it's really, really clean in here. And then you've also got healthcare bird in mind, so these guys live double their natural life expectancy. So Burger's kind of our elder statesman of the exhibit. We also have a few of our Magellanic penguins hanging out with us too. This is Ben, Jerry, and Maggie. And then we also have rock hoppers in here too. This one's hopping, as you can see how they get the name rock hopper. So again, three species in this exhibit. We also have two other penguin species here at the zoo. We have the little penguin, which is also called the, the fairy penguin uh, from Australia and New Zealand. And we also have the African penguin here as well, which both of those, those species are getting brand new exhibits this summer. Uh, I'm shooting for July, hopefully we uh, can open those more time, but yeah, they're doing a lot of construction right now, getting those things going, so it's really cool. But a uh, really interesting time in this exhibit because we're getting ready to start our breeding season, and if you look at our painting members over here, you can see they look a little bit different over here behind us. Some of the king penguins look a little shaggy compared to the others. So the two on the farthest, let me introduce you to our kings. So the kings are the big ones in the exhibit. So all the way on the far side, all the way farthest away from us, that's Larry. Right beside Larry wearing a green bracelet is BB. Then you've got Stacy, you've got Martin Luther, and you've got Coretta Scott. It's really loud in here. Again, the rock hoppers now, those two have kind of picked their little spot over there. Um, going to Oh, I'm here. I'm very friendly. Luckily, he's not on my shoulder right now. All right, what are we doing, big man? Yeah, so really, really cool time. So we're going through molt. We're going to start yelling again. Well, I'm not going to talk over that. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, over on the far side, those birds are going through molt. All of our kings are going into molt. So basically, they eat a bunch of food, their body weight swells up, they get really, really large, and their, their new feathers grow underneath the old ones, giving those two on the far side, giving them that shaggy-looking appearance. So those are all the old feathers. They're basically falling out, and the new feather comes in underneath it. That is what we call a catastrophic molt, whereas other bird species, like Bubba over here, those birds drop feathers all the time. Penguins do it in a two-week time span. So that's what's going on over there. Um, it's loud again. It's like they know we're filming in here. <laughs> and they're like, oh, let's, uh, let's just be loud. Uh, but no, um, really, really cool though, since we're going through molt, this is the, one of the beginning stages of our breeding season for our kings. So after the kings go through molt, they're going to go right into breeding season, which we're going to have a fun activity for you guys at home. Uh, to check the link at the end of this episode to check that activity out talk a little bit more about it here in a few but really really cool stuff with the breeding season coming up um, we've already started seeing birds pairing up one of the things I'm excited for with those two birds on the far side that's Larry and Bibi they are a historic pair for us they've bred together and reproduced in this exhibit we're hoping they pair up again this year but it's a really good thing <laughs> it's so loud there's a really good thing going those two are both at the exact same time so that's a really, really good thing for us, and good for them. They're going to pair up and uh, hopefully reproduce again this year. It's been a few years since we've had a king chick, so we're all really, really excited here in the birdhouse. Uh, you can see some of the rock hoppers over there moving around. Those guys, they're going to be going into breeding season soon. The guys over there making a ton of rackets. Those two are a historic pair for us. They've got a nice little site over there. I might try to discourage that. Uh, I don't really like that site. It's down low on the ground. The kings are going to walk by, and there's a little bit of altercation. So, um, speaking of altercations, breeding season is when it gets really stressful in here. It gets even louder than this, hard to believe. Uh, but yeah, it gets really stressful during breeding season. I like to equate it to it's as stressful as like Days of Our Lives, uh, the TV show. Because breeding season, everybody's a little edgy with everybody. There's lots of drama. Uh, we have to come in and kind of monitor everything and uh, 
all the birds try to beat us up as well because they all think we're trying to steal their girlfriends, and that's not what we do here. We're not stealing anybody's girlfriends. So, yeah, uh, if you guys have questions, feel free to shoot them out. We'll do our best to get to those questions. Uh, sometimes there's an awful lot of them, and it's kind of hard to go through all. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff going on. Again, the three species in here, kings being the big ones, rock hoppers kind of hanging out above them. Hopefully this rock hopper jumps in the gap there just to show you that jumping ability. That would be really cool. And of course, now they're going to turn around. Someone wants to know if penguins have knees and elbows. Excellent question. Penguins do have knees, and they are right where you think they are uh, up in the body. So what you're seeing down low, their knees are higher up in the body. It's just covered up. So when it came with bends its wings, it's more like this. They can't fold up like Bubba here if you look at his wings. They're nicely folded. In fact, I think he's got them all tucked in. Penguins can't do that. Their bones are fused. It gives a nice, uh, stable platform for swimming. And Angela wants to know if penguins are endangered. Are they endangered? So, out of 17 species worldwide, about, uh, about 10 of those guys are declining right now. Uh, actually, 12 of those guys are declining. When it comes to endangered species, our Magellanic penguins that are hanging out, those guys are looking for threat. The African penguins that we have here, those guys are endangered. Uh, they are a safe species within the ADA, so it's a, a species that we are focusing a lot of attention get their nose out a little bit better than their natural habitat. Um, again, out of the 17 species, 12 are declining right now. Um, with that declining, about 10 has a federal protection. It's really loud in here. I love it. I think it's great. Are penguins as loud as a truck horn? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think so. We, you know, the funny thing in here, we do have hearing protection guidelines. As you can see, it's really, really loud. If we're in here for an extended period of time, uh, one of our safety things is to wear earplugs. Um, what do penguins eat? What do penguins eat? Great question. So here at the zoo, we feed 11 different types of fish. It is all restaurant quality. It's all really, really good. Some of the stuff we're feeding out in this exhibit, a fish called Silversides, feeding out herring, we're feeding out Atlantic herring and codbait herring. We sometimes feed out capelin, we sometimes feed out mackerel. We also feed out uh, trout, which is a, a new fish for us, but it's really high in fat. That's the big thing penguins need. They need a very high fat diet, because they're spending a lot of time swimming, they're burning a lot of calories in the water, so they need uh, lots and lots of calories every day. Do penguins have tongues? Penguins do have tongues, and one of the crazy things with penguin tongues, their tongues have these little barbs on them. Uh, so the cool thing with their tongues, I was hoping he would kind of open his mouth a little bit, but he's, he just wants to kind of hang out with us. He just wants to breathe my leg. That's fine. That's, that's, that's special. Uh, but their tongues, they have all these tiny little barbs on their tongue, also on the roof of their mouth. And basically that acts like a fish hook. When they bite onto a fish and the fish tries to back out of their mouth, those barbs all point towards the back of the throat, and that basically makes sure that the fish does not get away from them. This is Jerry. He's looking really pretty right now. Look at him. He's like strutting around like he owns the place. Do they fly? They do not fly. I like to say they fly underwater. As you see these wings, he's giving you that, that flight look. So again, those few bones use bones in their flippers and their wings that keeps them from being able to fold them all the way up against their body but it does give them a nice stable platform so they're very very efficient in the water if you look at their body shape this is what we call fusiform so you're round in the middle you're tapered at the head you're tapered at the tail basically it's kind of like a football so a football is aerodynamic a penguin is what we call hydrodynamic because they're spending all that time in the water Um, how long can they be in the water? How long in the water? So in their natural habitat, penguins spend about 75% of their lifetime swimming. Here at the zoo, we try to throw them in the water as much as possible. We do that by putting enrichment in the pool, we put live fish in the pool. This time of the day, they're kind of like, kind of like slowing down for the day. This time of the year, they're also more concerned with replacing their feathers and also breathing. 
but they do spend a lot of time in the water uh, when it comes to swimming. Underwater, uh, most penguins spend about uh, 30 seconds to 2 minutes in the top 90 feet of the water in their natural habitat. That's about how long they stay in the water on average. Hey, you want to go for a swim? Hey, look at the enrichment over here. Ready? And he's like, and I'm done. <laughs> Claire wants to know um, what the yellow tag is for. Yeah, so if you look, so he's got this nice yellow bracelet. If you look at all of our other birds in the exhibit, you'll notice everybody has a bracelet. That is just an identification tag for us, kind of like a name tag. So if you look, everybody's got this nice name tag. So that lets me know who's who. So every single bird that you see has that, that little plastic zip tie. And then also, they each have their own individual number. I can go to our computer system and bring up all the information about each one of these animals. Every animal has their own medical file. Every animal has their own file of everything that we observe throughout our day. So a lot of being a zookeeper is basically just taking notes and doing paperwork. Uh, one of the glamorous sides of our job that people don't even think about. We hose a lot of poop and we take a lot of notes. So a lot of good stuff uh, being a zookeeper. But again, everybody individually marked and that's uh, how we know who's who. How long do they live? How long do they live? That's a great question. That's going to depend on the species. So king penguins can go up to 20 years in their natural habitat. These little rock hoppers about 10 to 12 in their natural habitat. The cool thing though is everybody in a zoo setting, if you're a penguin, can double their natural life expectancy. So again, our, our boy Berger over here that's standing right behind you guys. Berger here is 37, so he has almost doubled his natural life expectancy. He's got a pretty sweet gig going on here at the zoo. He's like ready to just kind of get out of our way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, it's, it's a pretty comfortable life when you're living at the zoo, honestly. It's very stress free. I think Burger is my favorite penguin. And Jerry's like all in your lap right now. Look at that. What about their names? Their names, so all of our kings are our clever king puns. So again, this guy's named Burger, Burger King. We have Larry, BB, Stacy, Coretta Scott, and Martin Luther. So everybody is a famous king. Larry King, BB King, Stacy King, Martin Luther King, Coretta Scott King. I would bet most people out there don't know who Stacy King is. Uh, I would give you a virtual high five if you know who Stacy King is. That is the black banded king penguin standing right in the middle. Uh, it's probably the tallest one standing over there. Stacy King, I named her, and uh, it's a, a pretty interesting king name if anybody's a basketball fan out there. Um, Dylan, age 10, wants to know which penguin has the wackiest personality. Wackiest personality? I would say one of our rock hoppers. I'm trying to see where he at. Uh, actually, I think he might be behind us. Uh, one of our rockers, this guy's pretty crazy, but uh, the guy at the food plate, so we do have a, a food station over there. That is Baca. He has the wackiest personality. If you're going to rate penguin personalities. Baco here, he hashed out in this exhibit. He uh, was raised by his parents. And he is uh, named after a former zookeeper here at the zoo. Who, that zookeeper was pretty wacky too, so. <laughs> How many kinds of penguins do you have, do we have here at the zoo? We are really lucky here in Cincinnati. We have five species total out of the 17. So the three that are in here, again, the Magellanic King and the Rockhopper, and then also the Little Blues and the African penguins. So we're really, really lucky. Um, in this exhibit, it's just the three, the Africans and little penguins are getting those brand new exhibits built right now. So hopefully those open this summer. And uh, right now we're still on track for that. But yeah, it's a lot of uncertainty with that, but we're still moving right along. So really excited for those, for those new exhibits. And uh, I'm officially calling this one the new so. when, when penguins have an egg, who takes care of the egg? So, with all penguin species, with the exception of the emperor penguin, all penguin species, when it comes to egg care, males and females both take care of the egg. With the emperor penguin, that is the only species that the male does the entire incubation. So with our king penguins, they are very similar to emperors. They look very, very close. They're closely related. They have the same genus. 
uh, what they do, they don't build a nest just like the emperors, they do everything on their feet. Which, uh, again, if you click the link uh, at the end of this, end of this home safari, or homework for you guys is to do this awesome penguin activity where you're going to pretend that you're incubating an egg. So you're going to take any sort of item that you have, like a football or a pillow or a stuffed animal or any sort of cool thing, and you're going to try to incubate that on your feet. Again, the description is in the link, so check that out. It's going to be really cool. And we're super excited to see videos and photos from you guys trying to recreate that and see who's a good incubator out there and who's not. So again, that's going to be happening, though. Breeding season in here is going to be happening once everybody goes through molt. So those two that are farther along than everybody else, those are the two that we want to molt at the same time. Everybody molts generally in the same time frame, but uh, sometimes when they molt just a little bit off, they start breeding season without each other. Those two have reproduced for us in the past, and we would like them to reproduce again. So it's a really good thing to see that they are both molting at the exact same time. So me as a penguin keeper, I'm really excited. Um, last year was a good year for us. We had three eggs, three eggs laid in this exhibit for our king, which was a really big deal. Uh, one of which was fertile, uh, ended up not hatching, but it was still a good step in the right direction. And then the other two were infertile, but still three eggs for us was a big deal. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a king chick, so we're really, really excited. Bailey wants to know if it's normal for several different species to live together. Yeah, that's a great question. So the cool thing about our exhibit is we are showcasing this, this pretty wide range of areas. So the southern tip of South America or a sub-Antarctic island is kind of what we're recreating down off the coast of South America. So all of these species could be found in the same natural habitat, but it would be just a little different parts of that habitat. The kings would be on your flat, rockier areas rock hoppers up on more of the cliffs and the rocky spaces. So it, it is a little different, but yes, you would find all these guys in the same area. Great question. You see Burger again. Again, he's, he's my favorite bird. He's a, he's a pretty cool guy. He's kind of earned the right to do whatever he wants in the exhibit since he's 37. Again, he's the oldest king penguin in North America. How do you penguins know, how do penguin chicks know who their parents are? So, the interesting thing with penguins is a lot of times they don't know who their parents are. There isn't a family structure with penguins. So the penguins, uh, the parents will raise the baby, the baby goes out to sea for its first time, they will come back to the same area, but they don't recognize their parents, they don't have any sort of like family reunion in their natural habitat. So then even here, there's not really any sort of like family grouping. It's just a colony grouping, so everybody wants to be in the group with the colony, but there isn't any sort of like family structure that you would see in like, say, some of the animated movies. Do penguins have teeth? Penguins do not have teeth, because penguins are birds, and birds do not have teeth. Do penguins hold their breath underwater? They do hold their breath just like we do. Yeah, so again, penguins are holding their breath on average about 30 seconds to two minutes. The longest recorded penguin dive was around 21 minutes, though, and that was an emperor penguin. That's way longer than us humans. Good questions. I like it. How do you know if an egg is fertile? So one of the things we do here at the zoo, we, are, we know who's really good at incubating and who is not. Sometimes we have to pull the eggs out from underneath the parents and give them a fake egg, and then we can take the egg down to our birdhouse incubation room and we have a thing that's called a candler. It's basically a super bright flashlight. Uh, once the egg has passed a certain certain length of time in incubation, we can basically hold the egg up to that super bright flashlight. It shows us what the egg looks like inside, and we can see if it is fertile or not. Great I just did some candling this morning of some other eggs. So a lot of stuff going on here at the zoo. All right, so again, guys, definitely click the link and check out the uh, activity, your homework for this home safari, and keep tuning in again every day at 3 o'clock to see these other home safaris. We've got a lot of animals here at the zoo, so there's a lot of cool activities coming your way, so definitely check it out. And thanks for hanging out with us, checking out all these awesome penguins, and uh, you guys all be good to each other out there. Have a great day.